Hi, uh, hello, how are you? Welcome to a, another Wednesday night Project Healing Waters live stream. Thank you for joining me. We've been at this at uh, the bench here from home for uh, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. This many fingers worth of months. Holy smokes. But uh, yeah, here we are. We do this every Wednesday night, 6 o'clock to mostly about 8-ish. Uh, sometimes I might cut out just a little bit early. Um, it all depends on how the, the flow of the efforts go. Um, so, where are we at today? Are we in December? December... I think i got to flip my calendar over. What's today? Today's the 2nd. Uh oh. I think that's December. January or Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, we gotta flip my cal. Sorry, we gotta flip my calendar over. Uh, last. I always always like the last. Last one of the thing. There we go. December. And it throws me off. Not that that it's in Russian. It's that it starts with uh, Monday. So I, you know, most of my calendars, a lot of calendars start uh, a little bit later, but here we are. Um, anyways, let's check in, say hi in the chat. Let's see if we can get this thing going. It says that we're connected. It says we got one viewer, two playbacks. There's been a lot of uh, connection issues here uh, in the past, and the all the technology does doesn't ne necessarily want to connect and uh, work together uh, at the same time. But I don't know. We'll get this started here. It takes me a few minutes to uh, get this pulled up on my uh, iPod. That way, when I spin around to the bench I can see what's going on in the chat because I encourage any and all to say hi hello uh, talks amongst yourselves in the chat it's always fun for me to uh, uh, take a break from the coming up with this uh, infinitely long monologue it seems like sometimes uh, but yeah how's it going how was everybody's uh, Thanksgiving and Black Friday was that last week? I don't know. I flipped my calendar over. Cyber Mondays, etc., etc. Anyways, so today, tonight, uh, I, I really, I, I, I don't want to, like I said in the title, uh, what did I call it? The jelly, jelly bean. So this is a, a scud that you build using uh, UV material. And I believe this is uh, from our good friend, uh, I believe it's Barry Ord Clark, the feather bender. Uh, I believe he's the one that uh, has a really nice YouTube video, which is where uh, I got this pattern from a way while back. And I've, I've tied this uh, a few times before. Um, but here we are, we're all here together. So thanks for joining me. I know I say that again and again, but I really, really mean it. Um, so let's not waste any time of me jibber-jabbering. We're going to go ahead and turn on our light. And switch the camera around. Uh, as you can see, I got a little bit of a flat spot on my, my jelly bean. Um, it's not a perfectly uh, perfect shaped uh, jelly bean, but nonetheless... And I really had to uh, kind of mess around with this earlier as to what color works best for the background. And I'm thinking the white background for now. Maybe the black. I don't know. I need light to tie. But it can also be a little bit too much for the camera. It might be the black. Without it burning. I 
but as you can see maybe maybe not I went ahead and I used a uh, orange wire instead of a copper wire but we'll go ahead and tie a few of these up and I'm sure um, some are gonna look better um, some might look a little worse yeah I just don't think green is the winner I think it's just a little hard to see I don't know what do you guys think those of you who have been uh, watching this opening segment what color do you think uh, works the best as far as uh, background for those of you who are watching at home let me know um, in the chat what works best uh, you, you guys think for uh, the background background color because I can I got the green the white the black and I think this is probably going to be my best bet for lighting because I think if I go with that it just might be a little bit too hot I don't know let me know if you can see it or not see it um, in the comments as we go along and I try my best to accommodate and I cleaned off my bench and what that left me were boxes I got a box of stuff to sort and put away Coleman, good evening. Got to put the rot, musky rod away for the season. Outstanding. Outstanding. Dave says green. All right, we'll leave it at the green. All right, so let's go ahead and try uh, a few of these and see what we can come up with. Now, it's definitely, um, this, is, this is where those of you with a, a true, true rotary vice, um, will have the uh, definite advantage uh, with tying this because, you know, we're, we're going to use gravity to help settle our goop down. And, you know, this, this vise, although it does rotate, it's not a true rotary, as in the at center axis went from horizontal up to whatever, I don't know, that'd be 45... I don't know 15 20 degrees whatever this angle is but anyways it's a fun little dance um, let's give it a try I, as you can see I did did one of these earlier and I just couldn't couldn't quite settle on the lighting so I figured I'd wait till you guys all get here and I wanted to loosen up this bobbin just a little tick And that works out a lot better. So my the tension on my bobbin was just a little bit too tight, and instead of bending the arm, physically manipulating the way this is, I just took out the spacer from the side that the, holds the spool together, and that flows out pretty good. Anyways, thread I'm using tonight. Let's get our camera on there. It's a 12 watt waxed thread, Semperfly. I wish I knew the full story behind Semper Fly. It really, to me, it really sounds like a uh, a company that you know would be founded by a bunch of old Marines or something. All right, we'll start our thread. We'll not use those scissors. Wow. Where did those other ones go? Anyways. I said I cleaned off the bench. What we're going to tie in for our legs on the bottom is going to be our uh, white ostrich. That's some. And then we, after we tie a couple, we're going to probably uh, shift gears and go down the rabbit hole of different uh, color variations. And my wire that I wanted to use I got this hot orange, small hot orange UTC wire. I ask this all the time. If we have uh, small is SM, what is BR when we look at the size of it? BR stands for b -b 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 brassy. Alright, we'll start our wire. I like to run it on the side. That way I got full control over it. 
work our way down the back. And this is going to be that little inner blood vein, whatever you want to call it. All right, super simple at this point. It's a, it's, it's kind of a, a stepwise, you know, on paper, this is a really simple, simple pattern. Um, and I think it's just with the goop and junk, it just matters. It's just a matter of uh, time and practice. So if we tie it in by the tip, we're going to be going in with the smallest bits of the fibers. Whereas if we tie it in back here, the stem, I don't see much difference. It's pretty even, Stephen. I'm going to tie it in by the tip. A little bit of ways in. It's all right if it. And you can use a couple in here, I suppose, if we really wanted to. All right. And with that downward slope, look at that half hitch. That guy went way out there. I'm just going to throw a quick half hitch on the thread just to keep that thread from sliding off. What do I say about the half hitch? It's like hitting the pause button. You know, I could get up, go walk the dog if I had one, uh, you know, and come back, and the thread's not going to be anywhere, even if everything shakes. So, from time to time, I really don't do it probably as often as, you know, some might, but don't forget that the old half hitch is there. It's a nice tool in the toolbox to, to keep. And the price is right on that one. Half hitches for days. Alright, we're going to carefully, oh so carefully, be so mindful around the tip of that hook. Come on guys. That will destroy your day. Well, not your day, but this ostrich will be toast. And depending on the quality of your hurl, if you stroke too tight on it with your fingertips, you might actually uh, risk taking the fuzz right off it. Which is great if you're doing a uh, stripped quill body, but if you're trying to make one of these little fuzzy jelly beans, see, you can see why I did that half hitch, right? I'm bouncing the end of that like a bumper car. Nice and even. Take your time. Back to front. Alright, just leaving a little room up front for a head. We'll get our thread kind of reoriented. And we'll lock it in. It's kind of like the Ray Charles, um, but here we're just sticking with this, uh, just this one. All right, so that's going to be it for now um, on that end. So guess what? I'm going to use my half hitch tool this time. I'm just going to throw a couple half, throw a half hitch in there. One more, just because. Who knows? All right, pop quiz. Who knows their knots? Who knows, not necessarily their fishing knots, although it, it's, I mean, all knots, I believe, for the most part, can be backtraced to nautical and water themed and stuff like that. Um, even the old trucker's hitch, uh, I believe, had its roots back in the water days. But, anyways, if you take two half hitches, two opposing half hitches, what knot do you get? What knot do you get when you combine two opposing half hitches? Think about that one there, folks. Let's uh, leave your guesses in the comments, in the chats. All right, so 
we got this nice little fuzz ball, right? It's nice and fuzzy all the way around. And as we could tell from our little sample earlier, which Lord help me where I put that one. That should probably go on a piece of cork, just so I don't lose it. Oh, I tell you what, man, these little corks, put a cork in it. If you uh, are a connoisseur or uh, uh, partake of uh, things that include corks, um, you don't. You can just get it from your bottles. But um, me, I'm not much of a. I don't consume much of a beverage that includes corks. So I went to my local handyman, east side, on the east side here, and said hey how about some cork and they're only like 30 cents a piece 10 cents a piece depending on how big you want them anyways uh one close double overhand knot is close a double overhand knot would be uh two successive uh half hitches we're talking two opposing half hitches Where's my navy guys at? You guys should know this one. It's kind of. In fact, I can tie it. If I had a decent sized line around, I could probably tie it. Tie it one handed. All right, so we uh, pushed all the the fibers from the top down to the sides, right? Me right here, right now, my fingers, you know, having a live stream, um, this, that, and the other. My, my fingertips are moist enough. Um, now, if you're going to tie a few of these, uh, just word of caution. I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of putting my fingers in my mouth, especially when I'm sitting around the bench tying flies. Get a wet sponge, uh, a little small bowl of water for you to dip your fingers in. Um, but... You know, we're messing around with these materials. I don't want to necessarily put it in my mouth and then touch the materials and then put it in my mouth, especially if I'm messing around with these uh, UV chemicals. Uh, I really don't want to get that stuff in my mouth. It doesn't smell good. Why would, why would you want to put it in your mouth? Any other guesses? Two opposing half hitches I'm gonna let that one go I'm gonna let you guys keep figuring that out get a piece of rope or a string or shoelace and tie tie it two opposing half hitches and the working ends will uh, come out from the inside <clears throat> alright so speaking of the resins we're going to We've got different flavors, different thicknesses of you know UV resin. Not all resins are equal. I'm not going to sit here and say one is better than the other. Um, I have aligned with the uh, Solar Res. I'm not going to sit here and say this brand is better than any other brand or anything like that. But this is the brand we're working with tonight. Um, and it's what I have here. Uh, Steve Trybowski is in the house. Good evening, Steve. Thanks for tuning in. And we have the win, the clove hitch. Outstanding. Very nice. All right. <clears throat> so my first round is I just want to lay a quick little base layer on top of the uh, spine. YOLO. <laughs> All right, so let's grab a little dabble, do you? And if you don't have a, a precision applicator tip or anything like that, definitely go with your bodkin. And this is the uh, thin. This is not quite uh, as thin as the bone dry, but this is just going to give 
kind of like a primer almost. So just a quick little strip. That's going to be our primer. All right. And uh, because this is not the bone dry, bone dry, the solar as bone dry the, that we use at the uh, end, you know, under 10 seconds. Well, this other stuff, ladies and gentlemen, most of your other uh, UV curing resin is not, in fact, is not 10 seconds or less. Take your time with it. What's the hurry? If you're trying to tie one of these super fast and um, even though that you don't see me do this on camera um, usually when I do something with my resin before I can get the cap back on it um, if I don't if I'm kind of in a little bit of a hurry to reach for my light I don't want to set my uh, UV resin down right next to uh, where I'm going to be shining my light in fact, what I'll do is I'll take a, my uh, UV bottle, I keep it in my, my left hand, and I actually put it underneath the fly tying bench so it's protected from any outside UV light that gets blasted um, over, I guess it'd be overspray, over light. What's the opposite of a shadow? I guess that would just be the light. Over, over, I don't know. This would be from the light. I'm thinking overspray if it was like a from a spray can and just. Psh, I don't know. Gobble till you wobble. All right, let's lay a bead of medium. So we did our layer of thin, just a quick thin layer of thin, and we're going to use a little bit of uh, medium viscosity. All right, and we're going to want this to just kind of match. Match the, uh, the surface. Exposure, yes. Exposure. I'll tell you what, speaking of exposure, I don't know if you guys are with me on this, but one of the shows that I wish I could find on um, streaming services that I subscribe to, that's a big one, uh, is that old TV show Northern Exposure. That was a humdinger of a show. Okay, and before that settles, I'm going to kind of rock this back and forth. I'm going to leave it on this side, and I'm letting gravity, letting gravity kind of help even this out. And there we go. Set it and forget it. Take your time. We'll give it a full amount of exposure. Oh gosh, I remember somebody had a had a poster, and it's the back of it's the back of a back the backside of a of a flasher, a guy wearing a trench coat, and he's uh, allegedly he's flashing a. Uh, a nude statue, an old, you know, statue, big old stand it statue that says, Expose yourself to art. Oh, I thought that was pretty interesting. Okay, so we could stop there, or we could go for a little more. I'm going to add another layer of medium, just another layer, thin layer. And that's the thing is, boys and girls, let's, we're not going to try to do too much all at once. And if we do too much all at once, we're going to get way too much. In fact, I'm going to take a little bit off there. And like I said, we just kind of want to take our time with it. Let gravity help us. Gravity is a good friend in this operation. And I can also be a hinder too. I think that'll I think that'll do us for this one. Okay, now we're gonna get crazy with the cheese whiz here.
We're gonna give that a little test. Just, just give it a little poke before we go too far. If it doesn't move, sweet, we did it right. All right, too easy. We're gonna go ahead and wrap our wire, our hot orange wire. And it's up to you. You can wrap it forward as a regular wrap or wrap it backwards as a counter wrap. At this point, it's entirely up to you because it does, I, I think at this point it's pretty much irrelevant. But you do want to have a nice, even open spacing on that bad boy. And that's going to be us. Let's go ahead and secure that down. Okay, here we go. All right. That's going to be it for that. We're done with our thread. Go ahead and trim that off nice and close. All right, now for the fun part, we're going to add another little layer of thin. So we're going between the thin and the medium. Um, if you don't have medium, go with the thick. Uh, and just plan on gravity uh, taking a little bit longer with this. All right, let's go and add a seal coat in on this. This is the thin. Just a little touch here, a little touch there. What you don't want to do is too much all at once. I'm just using the tip to help spread that out. I'm not really giving it too much more of a squeeze. Here we go. Again, I'm going to kind of let gravity help. And if I see it running a little bit too far to one side, I can turn and rotate. Here we go. We'll take a second and set that little layer. All right, let's go ahead and we did thin. We're gonna come in with the medium. It's basically, we're just, we do thin, medium, thin, medium, yes. Oh, this is a nummy nummy looking pattern, indeed. Okay, so one of the things I also want to really consider is the angle of things as I goop this on. Got to figure out where the top of this is going to be. And if it gets too crazy, I can always take it completely. What's nice about the Regals is, you know, or most vices, I think, just pop it out of its stem and just hold it in your other hand. Um, that's going to be our worst case scenario. All right, so this is, make sure I got the right stuff. This is a medium viscosity. Medium viscosity, AKA the orange label on this one. The amount of the UV products on the market has just grown exponentially in the last few years. 
uh, solar res they got their their bread and butter in the market is um, surfboard repair that was their original market stuff like that and then uh, then they kind of started getting into fly tying stuff I suppose all right, let gravity do its thing. All right, because we're taking our time with this. We're letting things kind of settle and flow, settle and flow. And then you zap it. Excellent. Set it and forget it. Yeah, this is... Uh, I believe if somebody wants to check for me, I guess you don't. I guess you couldn't um, without leaving the live stream. But um, I believe it's a very good, comprehensive, instructional uh, video of how to tie this. Uh, Barry Ord Clark. I got his book, and I went and I just kind of did a quick flip through, and I checked out the index in it, and it didn't. Um, it didn't have anything um, of this in there. It's, it's the feather bender fly tying techniques. And what's nice about his book is uh, he 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 has links or he, he, QR codes in his book, so it takes you right to his uh, YouTube page. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's go one more. A little bit more thin. Uh, this is the the product. The product itself is a UV curing resin. Uh, the 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 resin itself it, it's liquid until it is attacked. No, nay, it is exposed uh, by a ultraviolet uh, light source. Um, don't spend your uh, days staring at this stuff. It's not good for your eyes. Um, anyways, thin, we did our medium and we're, and I'm going back between, back and forth between the, um, medium and the thin. And, you know, this could be done easily, uh, with, uh, other type of resin, but I'm sure it would just be a little more difficult. All right. So, last little final touches here. Right on the sides. Don't forget to get up front. Here we go. Nice and smooth. All right. You know, I wonder uh I wonder if you could have a ultraviolet flash of high high in, just as you know, super high intensity just bing almost like a camera flash. You know, Steve uh it's a great book. Uh, the thing that really kind of chapped me a little bit uh, about the book was uh, I originally did a pre-order on it on Amazon because that was where I could order it and got it, you know. And then it just kind of sat there and sat there and sat there and it just never showed up. And I see the book got released and then this and that. And I'm like, well, where's my copy? It never came. Never The order never got triggered. Um but it finally showed up. I finally, had, I actually had to reorder it. Um, all right. Let's say we add just a little bit of uh, color to this. And I'm going to come in with a little bit of olive. Er, this isn't olive. What do we call this? Marsh. Marsh green. Just a little olive.
this is one of those things that's like maybe that side's not really working out very well let's go there it is it is adding just a just a little bit of a hint of color in there And then our last layer. I wonder if I could utilize like a ball of mirrors. <laughs> Maybe, perhaps. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the, the reality is, is how much time am I really trying to save here? I'm already using um, ultraviolet light curing resin opposed to uh, whatever epoxy and letting it sit here on a drying table trying to rotate it and churning and burning all right so now I'm gonna add my final coat top coat or we could actually go just a little bit more you know what I'm gonna straight send it on this one we're gonna go One more layer. And I just want to make sure you get it all the way on the back. A little bubble. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a pop it out of the vice moment. I'm going to have to let it dance here. Because it's more than just a spin at this point. All right. That was exciting. It's we went way too much on there. I should have took half of that off. Oh, burn. Oh, well. No way. Well, shoot. And just like that, we're done. Let's see. I might have a spare bulb. I don't think so, though. Fly, where's my thing that says charger? Because I believe I have either loaned out or gave away my, uh, Batteries, not my batteries, but my other UV flashlights. Well, that's kind of the whole principle of this. I should have, could have, should have. Man, I'm totally bummed right now. Unless, nope, that's just a regular flashlight. Hmm. Well, that's a bummer. You know when you have a day that just is a day of all days and go ahead and take another swipe another quick look I 
This is the sound of me frantically digging, looking for an old, looking for the old UV flashlight. Where are you at? Where are you at, my friend? I think we might be dead in the water, folks. This is what happens. Because uh, with the light, not the light, but with the battery, it goes and goes and goes and goes. It gives you everything it has until it doesn't have anything else. And unfortunately, it's a uh, rechargeable battery, and I suppose I don't have a spare battery like that. Hmm. What do I do? What do I do? Hold on one second. All right, well, I guess we are dead in the water as far as um, that little operation goes. Um, all right, we're going to go to a Plan B fly. Uh, Rob, the wife's UV nail polish curing light. She does not have one. Um, she would borrow my UV light if she were to use UV junk on her nails, but... Oh, shucks. All right, well, let's go to a Plan B alternative. It might be a loose connection. Well, I don't... Like, fix it like a Russian spaceship, huh? Well, I guess that's not going to hurt nothing. Tell you what, if Dave makes a suggestion, I go for it. Yeah, it just got just enough juice, um, just enough juice here to barely flick around. So uh, while I get this first one started, I guess we can try this again. Um, but I'm going to throw this back in my little charger here, and we're going to see what we can get out of this in between. So just in that quick few moments we did get a little life out of that so we're gonna send it we're gonna tie it. we're gonna try it again and send it if I can get this back in the charger properly all right and we are blinking all right I did find at one point I I thought I had uh, a UV oh it is I do have a little spare all right so while that charges this came with the pen light the little UV you see it as as seen on TV UV pen light whatever um, that's what this is this is actually UV yes we are solid. All right, we're going to try another one, and we're going to resist the temptation of that last final goopity bloop. Because that just uh, it ruined it. All right, where'd you go, Mr. Quirk? All right. So, yeah, like I said, it's relatively, it's a simple pattern to tie. Um, 
and I broke my rule of keeping it sparse. I just wanted to just go too much with it, too far with it, and... One of those things. It's a lot easier if you, like I said, if you got the true, true ro rotary vice, might be a lot easier to work with. I don't know. Pretty sure. Um, you know, I. I've heard, I've had a lot of people ask about uh, making, possibly making jewelry. In fact, I've got a uh, little, I've got stuff to do it, but there's actually a little bit less of a market. So this is what I got. And it's not as easy to tie on as you would think. So I've got this, it's a big long stainless steel. And then I, you know, you tie your, your fly or whatever on this. And, uh, And after it's tied, I got these little doohickeys that make for earrings. But, uh, I don't know, I've made a couple and have given them to like my mom and stuff, but I don't know, it's like one of those things, it's just not much of a market for it. But, if you have any requests, I'm open to, I'm open, or not requests, but if you, if you really want to, no, I can probably whip something out, but anyways. So the hook we're using, I never I don't think I mentioned that earlier. It's a size twelve. It's caddis. Little caddis curve. And our thread again twelve out. Waxed. I like the wax thread. Always a fan of the wax thread wax thread. Get that started. Now the question is, do we try another one with the uh, white? Or I was going to possibly look at, I got this scraggly black. I don't know. We know what the white one looks like. Let's try one with black. I don't know. I'm, I'm on the shelf. Maybe we'll do that for our next one. We'll do one more white one. And then after that, we'll shift gears and kind of go down the rabbit, go down the rabbit hole of changing colors. Nice tight wire. Small wire. I like this hot orange. I think it really adds a fun little accent. I'm gonna go back just a little bit further this time. Well, that'll work for now. Let's go ahead and grab our uh, ostrich. And we're looking for nice big Full size ostrich. Let's go ahead and tie this in. I'm going to tie it in by the tip. Nice and close. All the way up front. And at that point, you can just rip or break that off. All right. Let's go ahead and throw a quick half hitch in there. And we'll throw a second one in there. It's 
the thing with these curved hooks, these down eyes. You always got to be careful. All right, a little insurance policy in there never hurts. A little uh, proactive. Better to be proactive than reactive in most instances. However, comma, it's always good to know how to be reactive. All right, let's go ahead and palmer this forward. Touching wraps. And be oh so mindful about the tip of that hook. Not only will it break your material, it'll hurt your feelings at the same time. Work our way forward. It's a fun little fuzz ball, huh? Locking wraps. And that's going to be it. Bada boom, bada bing. There we go. All right. I need to take a sip of coffee. All right. So, hopefully we got a little bit of a charge. Oh, wait. You know what? I just saw... Wait, we don't have to worry about that charge so much because we got this other UV light now got the spare. Always good to have a spare. There's no such thing as too many flashlights. Am I right or am I right? Alright, we're going to go ahead and coax our little fuzzball of ostrich hurl. We're going to have it lie down. Clearing the runway on the top. Go ahead and take a sponge or a little dab of water somewhere off to the side if you need. Really kind of get that. Part it off to the sides. Nice and even. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Alright. We're going to do a quick layer of thin. Just to do a, our initial seal coat. Right over the hurl. Thin, thin, thin layer. Little dab of glue you. Watch the bubbles. I like having just a little bit of transparency in these tips like this so I can see see the liquid getting to the tip of the nozzle. Okay. Looking good so far. Go ahead and zap it with our world's cheapest UV light. However, right now, this UV light is worth its weight in something. Because it's what we got. Um, this isn't my ideal 
I'm sure there's got to be some like major major rating difference between but I don't know who else my uh, military buddies my project healing waters participants who had a flashlight uh, like this um, and wore it or had it part of your gear while out in maneuvers or whatnot in fact I had one of these I believe it also it wasn't a uh, ultraviolet it was infrared I had an infrared uh, dot basically all right so we did our thin we're gonna add our uh, medium so we're gonna go thin medium thin medium etc etc except we're gonna keep it sparse why say it with me now sparse is nice you know and I know it let's go ahead and add a little bead and we're keeping this on top this is a medium viscosity we went from thin to medium take your time and if you get a little practice on the droop you watch the girls at the Dairy Queen do that you get the perfect little droop hold my thread up and out of the way boy that's looking pretty darn good zap with this handy dandy hand size UV light how about a layer of glow in the dark resin I do have glow um so maybe we could do a layer of glow. And this glow, this glow is uh, a treated, I spilled some out of my big container and it's super goopy. Um, but it's a thick, so let's give that a try. Maybe we'll just do a quick little layer of this. Why not? Just a thought. One of your thoughts steered us in the wrong direction, Mr. Steve. I'll work that forward just a wee bit. Alright, that's going to be interesting. Ooh, the International Space Station is flying above. One of my apps on my phone is a uh, International Space Station Tracker. I really, uh, you know, it's like, what's, what's one of the things that has gotten you through the pandemic? Well, I gave them one of the most errant answers is uh, the, the International Space Station. I have really have enjoyed all the uh, comings and goings of the space station this year. It's been some really good, interesting launches. 
All right. Oh boy, let's wrap our wire now. I seem even like a candy cane. And I think that'll do us right there, huh? That's us on the bus. Go ahead and trim our wire. And then we'll just whip finish. Let's go ahead and do our, I'll tell you what, I, I went too much, I think, with the, with the medium on top. So I'm just going to stick with this thin. I know I want to do, yeah, one layer thin. This is the seal on the wire, allegedly. Don't forget you got both sides of this. All right, look away, look away. Zap done. And then we'll take another zap after we do a quick little layer of medium on top of that. That's what it is. And then we're going to put our th stuff on that and walk away. Nice and easy. So I'm not sure what the, uh, the other brand, the Loon brand uh, nomenclature for their thin or medium viscosity is articulated as, but. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 always good to have different tools in your toolbox, and I don't know if one's necessarily better than the other, but I have had some good successes with this stuff. All right, I think one last layer of thin, just to round it all off, and that's going to be it on this one. I don't think there's anything there to fill in. Both sides seem pretty nice and even.
All right. Saved by the 50 cent UV flashlight. <laughs> Go figure, man. I'm so happy this just happened to have been sitting right here in my bench. Because this is, I keep it, this used to ride with my box that I would carry back and forth to and from the, the VA for Project Healing Waters. And I haven't been traveling back and forth, so the box, I got this really nice travel box, and I guess what, don't travel anymore. Okay, who's ready to see the magic of the uh, UV, or the uh, glow? So we'll turn that off. Humdinger, this might be an ice fishing jig. So the camera is doing its best to, and this is this is no no UV light. This is just the the I'm trying to cast a shadow. Wow, that's pretty creepy, huh? <laughs> Here you go. All right, so now I think we have to absolutely have to do that again. But I think this time we're going to add some chartreuse to that. Wow. That's pretty grubby, man. Questions, comments, concerns, birthday wishes, anniversaries. Shout outs. This one goes to Cindy from Dave. Oy. All right, let's keep on trucking. Keep on trucking. Yeah, it turned out all right. One last little dab of bone dry. I like to I like to add the bone dry as our final top coat. This gets rid of any kind of ticky tacky. We didn't add any marker to this round either. I'll be all right. Nice. All right. Last shot of zap. And if you notice, all the all the UV, all the junk, all the added material, all the bulk on this is on what side of the hook? It's opposite of the tip of the hook, right? Everything is everything is up here. The integrity of the hook gap was not was not impacted hardly at all. Right? We still got our hook gap. Don't want to go too far back down to that, down the bend. So I was actually I was thinking about tying this on a uh, jig hook. Now, who here has done that? Tied on a jig hook. I was thinking about tying. Where'd my little sample go? It's gone. I don't know. I think that I, I think I think that this would be a really good fly for 
or underneath the water or underneath the ice. I think you could easily ice fish with that. Imagination is your only limitation, ladies and gentlemen. And I like adding that little bit of uh, the glow in there. It gives it a little, keeps it a little cloudy, but um, I don't know. Let's try a couple. We'll try one with and without the glow. But we're going to try it with our, uh, if it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. I was thinking about maybe doing a black as well. You know, this is one of those patterns that, you know, once you get the swing of it, once you get, get the roll, get into the roll of it, um, you could really crank a few of these out, um, but you could really experiment with colors and size and shape. Um, I got one that I had it flipped upside down for an extra couple extra seconds and it really started to to goop and like almost almost like a drop. It was almost like a frozen uh, frozen raindrop. But anyways, we're gonna try this again. Size 12, barbless, no barbs. No barbs allowed, man. I don't know. So I talked to the old doctor, and official diagnosis, yours truly has tennis elbow or tendinitis. So I'm going to get... A cool little uh, armband. I said all the cool kids have it. And um, go from there. I get to do some icing exercises. And I asked, so well, at this point, can I still do my Rubik's Cuban? Because I really need to get healed up before um, I, I can go fishing again. Because for a while there, I couldn't hold a rod if I wanted to. But we're going to hopefully make some progress here soon. That's it right there. Hot orange, small wire. A couple extra turns. Keep that locked in there. All right. What did I say? Chartreuse, if it ain't chartreuse. Find the biggest, bushiest ones you got. And then we'll go from there. Same gig as before. We're going to tie it in by the tip. It's a little bit shorter of a feather, so or hurl because it hurl is it's that's not its own feather is it I don't know we'll take this train all the way up here we'll whip, give it a half hitch again hitting hitting this up with a couple of half hitches is just like hitting the pause button Make sure that thread doesn't run away from us. Uh, we'll just start taking touching wraps, working our way forward with this. And what are we going to mind? The tip of the hook. Ooh la la. And that's 
sit right there, buddy. Excellent. And I'm going to throw a half hitch in there just because. I have full confidence those half hitches are not going to come undone and my thread will not come flying off and unspooling. Alright. Right. right down the sides, clear the top. You don't want to trim this off, you don't want to take your scissors and cut, no no no. We want all of that goodness. It's kind of like a little, kind of like a little, uh, little shaggy dog. Come on, shaggy dog. Here we go. I like it. All right, little dab of thin. This will just be our quick first layer right on top of the... It's almost basically just on the quill of that hurl. Just a little dab. We're not trying to build this up too much yet. And then we'll set that. And we're having fun. I am. You guys having a good night? Good week? Can you believe it's December already? Twenty twenty, a year to remember. I'll buckle up. Twenty twenty is gonna be a fun ride too. Alright, we're gonna do a layer of medium. You know what? I don't think we're gonna do the glow on this one. We're gonna do that maybe on the next one. So we got time. What is it? 5.30? 5.20? Or 7.18? 20 after 7 thereabouts, more or less. Okay, let's take our time. And bloop. Trying to get it nice and even. Let's let gravity help us. Push it a little bit starboard side. I don't know, what side is the starboard side on a fly? Actually no, that would be the port side. I guess we're looking at the starboard side, right? You know what? I'm going to add one more little layer of medium on top of this. And then we'll spread that around. Yeah, 
buddy. Kind of going for that jelly bean. Go for the jelly bean look. Totally jelly bean. So even though this is crystal clear, that sucker is just refracting that goodness all around. All right. Let's give that a little, a little poke test. Make sure our resin is actually curing properly. And then this is the simplest taking some open wraps. I guess as much or as little as one would want. And I think that's going to be us right there at the front. finish. And that's going to be it for the thread. Alright. We're getting there. We're definitely getting there. All right, on to the thin word. Layer of thin on top, and this is gonna seal the deal for the wire. Keep that wire from slipping and sliding around. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit, bit, bit. Seriously, the more even you can get this to begin with, the less you gotta dink around with it at the end. And we're always letting gravity be our friend when we're working with this. And I would have a lot more confidence in the uh, setting of these after I zap them with the uh, actual flashlight. So I'm gonna set these all off to the side and uh, uh, I would I'm gonna zap them with my flashlight well, just before I put them in the box I guess. Uh, if I were, if these were to be used for ice fishing would I uh, change anything in the design? I would definitely add a little bit more weight, maybe. Um, you know, we could just try tying one on a jig hook. I mean, it's not going to... I mean, I really don't think fish really care which way the fish, the fly... I, I mean, they... You know, something like this, if it's in the water column, you know, it's not like... All these little aquatic insects you know travel with legs down their entire lives in, in the water I, I mean things gotta swim around or this or that I don't know let's try one on a jig hook I say we do that next um, perhaps maybe a bead head 
should definitely wait. You definitely want to get some weight. Well, I guess you could use a piece of split shot at that point uh, on your line. But um, jig hook with the bead. Well, let's try that, Dave. We'll throw uh, another layer of thin over top of this. And I think that might be it for this. Let's give it a try, Dave. Oh, let's all wish uh, our good friend Dave a happy belated birthday. Happy belated birthday, Dave. Stay awesome. Dave has been with the program. Project Healing Waters here in St. Cloud since day one. And he has been with me as my instructor. I learned partner virtually most things I know from Mr. Dave. Or at least you got the got the ball rolling. Let's see what we got. Nope, even this is starting to sputter. Alright. Well, I think we're going to get one more fly out of this, out of this flashlight, hopefully, maybe. All right, let's, boy, I, I really like the look of that green one. So we'll go with chartreuse again. I like the, the, the red. You know, I think maybe I should do the uh, the wire ribbing. I don't know, maybe a, a little bit tighter on the inside. I don't know. We'll give it a try. So let's try a oh, tungsten bead. Let's go with a slotted and what size? I got some jig hooks handy right here. Here's a size 14. There we go, size 14. Let's give this a try. A little bit smaller than uh, our predecessor here, but we're going to see what we come up with. All right, we'll throw that in there for now, and let's go with a, this is a 3.0 millimeter. I got this labeled for a 16, so we're going to go with the smaller. All right, and this one we got to put the tiny hole in first. Oh boy. Let me... Here we go. This is going to be fun. Let's go ahead and start with some thread. And I love doing stuff like this. So we've tied a few of these one way. And we're taking what we've learned from that pattern. And we are... Uh, Uh, oh, yes. Excellent suggestion, Steve. Thank you. Uh, leave the flies in a bright, sunny window to finish them off. Yes. Uh, you know what? The I, Actually, one of the videos from Solarize, I watched this guy. He was, I think he did a guitar or he, he did a coating on something, right? And he did it in his garage. 
and when he wanted to set it he literally just opened up his garage door and bam there it was all right let's come in with our hot orange again how do we feel about that chartreuse huh that turned out fantastic okay let's take this right to the bend find our chartreuse feather because if it ain't chartreuse it ain't no use We just take everything right tight to the bead. I don't think it gets any easier than that. And if you're ever afraid of crowding the eye, if you're one of those fly tires that you constantly crowd the eye, tie something with a bead head on it. It'll make it just a little easier. So no half hitches this time because I don't have to worry about this hopping and popping. I guess you can overcrowd a bead um, with stuff and stuff and junk and stuff. Here we go. That'll work. All right, we'll fold it down to the side. And this is basically what we did with the Ray Charles. You know? Who remembers the Ray Charles? Did we tie that on a Wednesday night? Yeah, I'm afraid if I go opposite, I'm afraid I'm going to interfere with the hook gap, and I don't want I don't want to put any hard material underneath. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to do this this way, and I don't think a fish is going to notice. I don't know, but I'm going to rely on the senior staff. And their thoughts. Just a quick little layer right over the hurl. And then we'll set this. Because I think the up up and down for us is only relevant for us in our benches and for photography and such. You know, maybe not so much for, uh, you know, streamers. Like a streamer, you, you know, if it's like a, a bait fish, you know, you've got that, those color patterns in there and... I don't know. I don't know if it matters or not. I'll have to ask the fish. All right, let's throw a layer of medium in here. Just a little dabble, da little dabble glue us.
nice. Oh, no doubt. If like if this if it wasn't a hard material, I don't think I would. I wasn't building up on the layers because I just don't want to get into the uh, into the hook gap. Mowing the gap. Curly cue this forward. Guess that'll be it. Oh, if you think this looks good on camera, you should see it in real life, ladies and gentlemen. This is just fan fartantastic. Hot mama. That's out of the way. Let's add a little layer of Oh, we want to go thin, not medium yet. I'll lock these in. Each layer we get a little bit closer. Now let's do our medium on top of that. Now I suppose we could like, you know, if we did this inverted, we could just stop like right there, I suppose, and that would be it, but I want to get a little bit. All the way, nice and even, nice and even. keep looking for my big flashlight <laughs> and I panic and then I realize I'm reaching for something a lot smaller hang in there guy I think that might be it for that flashlight I'm going to keep pushing it. Pushing the boundaries. that 
scoop go right at that angle. So I just pulled the pulled the stem right out of the the base of the vise. That way I can really have gravity help me out. And we'll start to set it. I suppose once it starts to set then we can just let it ride on the back here. shot a clear coat on top with our bone dry and this will help seal that all off at least to the touch Boy, oh boy, on a jig hook. It's definitely something. Yep, definitely set these out at the window. I think a fish would hit that. I think so. It looks like we got maybe time for one more. Not quite quarter till yet. We have dwindled down to five. We were nine or ten strong tonight, which is always good. Um, always appreciate each and every one of y'all's tuning in. This is our Project Healing Water special. We do this every Wednesday night. 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock, rain or shine. Um, actually, no shine, just uh, not really rain, but because it's dark. We are now in the dark stage of time. So there you have it. That's kind of the same thing on a jig hook. Maybe if I had a uh, a slightly larger jig hook oversize it just a little bit. Boy, that's a that's the winner right there. I love that chartreuse. White ones are cool too. Boy, I really like that one with the glow in the dark. Imagination is your only limitation, ladies and gentlemen. Let's, all right, I wanted to go back. I'm gonna try, um, not on the jig hook. We're gonna go back to the regular size 12 caddis. I want to try one with a black hurl. Bum bum bum. And with a black hurl, I reckon I should probably use a black thread, huh? That's a six shot. All right, we're gonna shift gears. We're gonna go to a uh, 70 denier <laughs> flat wax. We're gonna go from white and light and bright to black and dark. We're gonna give this a try. Let's see what happens. 
And we've tied a few of these already tonight so we can be a little bit more efficient with how we go about and tying all this stuff in and on. Looks good right about there. All right, Josh, thanks for tuning in. Tell the kiddo I said hi -o. She's still tying too, yeah? I believe last I, last I knew she was tying. You guys were all tying, tying flies together. It was a family affair, which is fantastic in my book. All right, let's try some of this black. This is pretty beat up. We're gonna give it a try though. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Ugh. Let's go ahead and try this one. It's a little scraggly, but I think it'll work. I think it'll work. All right, and just like before, we'll throw a half hitch in here. Keep us from losing our bearings. All right, cross your fingers. We're gonna. Well, that didn't last long. All right. Take two. I'll tie you in right there, I guess. I'm not too worried about adding weight. At this point, it's not like it's a, a dry fly. One half hitch will suffice. Come on, fingers crossed. Oh, I think this is just going to be too brittle. That batch is too brittle. Let's go for a different batch. I always got a plan B up my sleeve, don't you know? downside is it's just not super plump or very long really to speak of but again we'll give it a try all right Dave I will give you a call manana morning no problemo all right bud thanks for tuning in This is just not my, not wanting to work with us. Let's give that a try. I'm not going to give up on this. I'm not giving up. There we go. Now how far we're getting, how much progress this is actually being made, I don't know. But 
There's only one way to find out. We're getting smaller. And we'll stop that there. That should work, huh? I mean, it's not not gonna work. All right. Let's go ahead and split this hairline down. Start it with a thin. Slow progress is always progress. All right, I'm just going to send it with this wire. That just ripped right off. All right, we're getting there. All right, continuing on with some thin. Back to the mediums. And uh, another word of caution, I guess, uh, is you know some people are actually allergic to this uh, UV resin. So if you mess around with it and you break out in with a, a nasty rash or something, uh, this might be the culprit. So, and when you're done messing around with a night like tonight, I, I can see it glistening off of my fingertips sometimes. Just really want to make sure you uh, wash your hands when you're done with this stuff. Alright, we'll add a little bit of medium.
just to kind of smooth out that transition back there. Yeah, it is nice. All right. Fire up that little LED and let it shine, let it shine. Yeah, not as impressive as the white ones or the chartreuse, but it'll fish. All right, kids, that's going to be it for us tonight. Uh, thank you all for tuning in for our weekly Project Healing Water special. Um, be sure to join me next week. We'll do this again. Um, we do this every Wednesday night from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Be sure to join me. We do this, uh, and I have a lot of fun doing it with you. So, let's go ahead and flip it on over to the... scroller there it is all right